Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 17 of the Government Coins Podcast. This is season two, episode 17. And today I am so excited. Uh, this is a real treat for small businesses, but in uh, more specifically, women-owned businesses, right? To talk about opportunities that affect women-owned businesses and opportunities that are, are available opportunities and resources for women-owned businesses. So today, if you're in the state of Florida, <laughs> uh, don't leave if you're not in the state of Florida because these organizations are throughout the United States. Uh, but today we have Nancy Allen from the WBDC of Florida joining us here today to share and shed light on opportunities for women-owned businesses. So Nancy, would you please tell our audience about yourself? Uh, well, first off, thank you so much for, for inviting me. I, I am um, the type of person who looks forward to getting up every morning because I have a job that I love. Um, I have a personal motto that is connections, creativity, and courage in all things. And I get to live my personal motto on a daily basis. I work with women-owned businesses who are looking to um, access corporate and federal contracts. And we help them do that in a variety of ways, primarily through certification, which we'll talk about in, in, a, in a minute, but also through community and connection. Um, we are all about certifying, championing, and connecting women in business. So I'm excited to, to share my knowledge and learn from you as well. That is exciting. I just wanted to highlight that I said episode 17 and this is episode 16. Uh, but that is huge uh, because a lot of times we don't realize that the importance of having a community um, to be able to collaborate with, network with, and to do business with um, as well. And that was kind of a, a byproduct of me understanding the work that Nancy does um, and then also connecting with other women in business to actually learn from one another and build collaboration, uh, collaborative opportunities and connections like this. Um, and then would you mind giving us a little bit more detail in terms of uh, the work that you do? So, of course, you provide you help businesses get through the process of doing business with government agencies, but also federal agencies. We had someone to come on briefly and talk a little bit about that. Uh, would you mind sharing both of those uh, different avenues with us and how that process works? Sure, sure. So what we do primarily is help women access corporate contracts and we also help them access federal contracts. So um, the certification program that I uh, represent is a national organization, as you mentioned earlier. Um, even if you're not based in Florida, what I'm gonna be talking about is good for you because the, the organization represents women-owned businesses throughout the state, uh, throughout the United States. Uh, so the, the uh, main organization is called the Women's Business Enterprise National Council, and uh, the initials W-B-E-N-C, we pronounce as WeBank, even though there isn't, a, there isn't an E after that W, WeBank, W-B-E-N-C, we pronounce as WeBank. That is the organization that does third-party certification. Um, and uh, WeBank has a contract with the SBA, the Small Business Administration, to process WOSB, Women-Owned Small Business Certification um, and Application Requests. And as your listeners probably know, um, there are not enough women contractors to fill uh, federal contracts, right? So through the SBA and WeBank, when you apply for certification, first off, we get you certified as a woman-owned business. You own, operate, manage, and independently control 51% or more of your business. As you're applying, if you're interested in government contracting through the WOSB program, there's a tab where you click that you're interested. And you can apply for a certification as a woman-owned small business in two different ways. When you originally apply for certification, and then again, when you recertify. So the certification we provide is a year long. Uh, it expires after 12 months. And when you go to renew your certification, if you decide at that point, I'm interested in exploring uh, federal contracts, you would then click on that WOSB application. There's no additional cost to, to do that certification. 
Um, you have to register with SAM. There are a couple of things you, you know, another application you have to fill out, but it's nothing major. Now, Nancy, quick question in terms of the new um, registration process. So does that change uh, the way that WeBank would do business? Uh, WeBank will help businesses do business with a federal agency, being that the federal government has this new certify.sba.gov uh, application process, or does WeBank can like facilitate that as well? Yeah, WeBank is a third party certifier for that program. Okay, perfect. Makes perfect sense. Um, and then in terms of the third party certifications, uh, they, they work perfectly for government agencies and corporations. Is there a difference in terms of which certifications corporate agencies um, accept versus the ones that the federal agency accept? I, I don't think so. I, I think that, 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 you know, someone who is looking to do business with a major corporation, the Fortune 500 corporation sponsor and support WeBank, right? Because they're all about access. Uh, you know, we, you, we probably all of us know the statistics that 85% of buying decisions are made by women in this country, actually throughout the world. But since we're focused on the US, 85% of buying decisions are made by women. So corporations that are looking to promote diversity and inclusion want to be able to say in their marketing materials, we support women-owned businesses. So they actively recruit women-owned businesses to provide products and services. And through their supplier diversity programs and their affiliation to WeBank, the resources we provide, we help women-owned businesses access those contracts. Perfect. Hamza, did you wanna hop in? Yeah, I'm hopping in, man. This is the other co-host to Government Coins. My name is Hamza Sabri, um, founder and CEO of Globe Connects, world-class government contracting consultant firm. Um, and I'm glad to have you, Miss Nancy, uh, on our show. I'm running a little bit late. Actually, just flew into the airport. Just finally got into the house. Um, but Nancy just is on, and Nancy will be off uh, to the airport soon. That's why we had to push the episode. Up. She's going to Montreal <laughs> okay. today. Both, <laughs> both travel babies. I love it. There you go. I'm um, glad to get back to traveling. Right. So you were speaking about the women-owned certification and, and that process. I know the viewers that's listening on here, um, like what that looks like for us, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about small business or get your certifications, get your certifications, but okay, how do you actually utilize that cert? Because that certification will be something similar to like getting a, a barber license or getting your uh, nail technician license or therapy license. Like this is a certification that you, you're using to monetize. So Outside of just getting a certification, how do you monetize that actual social, social economic group status? Yeah, so that's a very good question because we like to tell people it's all well and good for you to give us everything but your firstborn child, right? Because the application is pretty lengthy. We ask, depending on how your business is registered as a corporation, as a sole proprietorship, we ask for between 25 and 30 supporting documents. So we really dive deep into your business to assure and ensure that you own, operate, manage, and independently control 51% of that business. So we're looking at your resume. We're looking at your articles of incorporation if you're incorporated. We're looking at your governance documents. Um, do you have your bylaws in place? If you're an LLC, do you have a membership agreement? Are you the managing member if there's more than one member? So we're doing a pretty deep dive to ensure ownership, management, independence, and control, 51% by a woman or a group of women. We also, because we're a third-party certifier, we do a site visit. Now with the pandemic, uh, we've been doing virtual site visits, but those have worked really well where everyone is asked a standard set of questions. And guess what? That's where we find the fraud. Because truthfully, anybody could write anything on an application. They could create any kind of supporting document that they want, even though they sign an affidavit saying everything we provide is true. Um, we catch the fraud when we're asking basic questions about the business and the business mm -hmm. owner can't answer. 
those questions, right? Um, we, we always tell the people we're going to interview, we're not going to ask you anything about your business you can't answer. So if you're overly nervous, don't be if you actually own the business, right? Um, you can answer every single one of the 50 or so questions that, that we're going to ask you as part of the site visit. We have um, over 16,000 women certified nationally. In my territory, which is Florida, minus the panhandle, Puerto Rico, we have 850 women certified. Now, I wish I could tell you that all 850 women in my territory and 16,000 plus nationally all have corporate and federal contracts. The answer is no. But they come to us and they keep renewing. My renewal rate, my recertification rate is 86%. So we're doing something right, even though these women are not getting corporate and federal contracts, right? We're providing community, <clears throat> excuse me, we're providing community, we're providing access, we're providing education. And I think every business owner needs those three things. They need a community that they can count on to support them when they're a little bit down, right? A business ownership is a little bit lonely sometimes. You need a community who's been there, done that, and can, can hold you up. Um, we are there to provide education, right? You need to keep learning. Um, I remember reading a really great book by, by Simon Sinek um, called The Infinite Game. And in it, he uh, profiles um, a, a very successful woman. Um, she was at the time of her retirement, the highest ranking woman in the US Navy. And he asked her, what is the, the key to your success? And she said, leaders look up and out and they hire people to look down and in. Right. So as business leaders, as business owners, your job is really to be the visionary, to always be looking up and out. How can I grow my business? And you do that through networking. You do that through education. And that's what we provide. So uh, we're really, really pleased with our recertification rate. Um, and we're really pleased to have some very successful businesses in, in our database. That's dope. So you working directly hands on with other small businesses and helping them through that through that process, which That's is dope, true. which is dope. Yes, we need more people like you because <laughs> so many, so many small businesses out here don't even realize the certifications that they can actually have for their business that help them grow, especially in the corporate and government contracting world. And, mm -hmm. you know, for you to be a pioneer and to helping small businesses tackle that that obstacle and actually be able to thrive uh, using those utilities to help their business, using those certifications to help their business, which is, is a, it's dope. And everybody that's watching this right now, get your certifications. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'll share with, with you as well as a lot of people come to us to get certified and then they withdraw the application because they said, you know what, I don't have those documents. Well, if you don't have articles of incorporation or governance documents or stock certificates, you're not really a business, right? You're not operating as you should be operating. So we do a lot of education in that sense. And um, also there are times when we have to deny an application and it's like a dagger in my heart every time I have to deny someone for a technicality. She owns the business outright She's working with an accountant for many years who puts on her tax returns that she is 50-50 owner with her husband. And her husband has nothing to do with the business. But the accountant figured, ah, they're married. Let me put him 50. Let me put her 50. And she never thought about it, signed those papers. And then when it comes to certification, she doesn't qualify. She doesn't qualify because the paperwork is wrong. So if you're a brand new business and you're looking to take advantage of the corporate contracts that are out there, the federal contracts that are out there, if you are a woman or a minority, there's a whole other certification for minority vendors, right? If you are a woman or a minority, make sure as you're setting up your business that you set yourself up for success by claiming and 
um, identifying and, you know, having all the right paperwork for the 51%, not 49.95, actually 51%. Really good point. Um, and that that pretty much that fifty one percent. I'm sorry, Shaquille. That fifty one percent that needs to be established within the um, uh, not articles organization, but maybe your operating agreement. Yeah, if you're an LLC, you have something called an operating agreement, and there are two categories of members. There's managing members and members. And a lot of people make the mistake and they say, oh, you know, the three of us are going to start a business. Shakia, Hamza and Nancy are going to start a business. We're all friends. We're all going to be managing. We're all going to be members. Well, you know what? That keeps you from being getting certified, because if all three of us are members, who's really in charge? Right. So you have to be as a, as a woman owner or as the minority owner, you have to be the managing member with an LLC. Got it. I hope the people that's listening are writing these gems down. <laughs> and then I'll also add um, in terms of one of the bigger components that we talked about is the connection and the collaboration. So this is, you know, beyond the certification, how are women owned businesses building and leveraging those connections to grow their business um, strictly, you know, through the collaborative opportunities provided by uh, WeBank? Yeah, yeah. So I'll give you two two really good examples. One is the the WeBank database. So when you apply for certification, you have to go through um, something called WeBank Link, which is our database, right? And once you are certified, you appear on the database as certified. That is sixteen thousand names you can look at and research and. Uh, attempt and successfully make collaborative efforts with. So if Shakia, you have a business in, in printing and I have a business in graphic arts, you may need my services. So I can use WeBank Link to look for opportunities to do joint ventures. Now, our corporate partners tell us all the time that they like to work with uh, strategic alliance groups. Right, so three of us come together, you provide printing, I provide graphic services, and let's say Hamza, you are the IT technology guy that's gonna put all this together for us, right? So we then form a strategic alliance and we apply as a brand new company and you know we could go into what you need to put in a strategic alliance in a little bit if you have questions, but we apply as a brand new company, the three of us to IBM to Pfizer, to UPS, to Disney, to Orlando Health, to Jackson Health, all of these organizations, they like to see strategic alliances. Why? It's easier, right? They've got one point of contact as opposed to Shakia is doing printing, I'm doing graphic design, and Hamza is doing technology, right? So through WeBank Link, the database, you can find opportunities for strategic alliances. I'll tell, I'll tell you as well, you can do some research through the database, right? If you're smart, you can look up your competition and you have access to their website. That's public information, but you may not know that I have a printing company that can provide XYZ service. You, through WeBank Link, you have access to my my website you take a look and you decide oh she's got contracts with this she's doing that maybe i can help her out maybe i can look here and there so that's a really great resource for community building and collaboration another way for for collaboration is just the events that we do so uh, we bank does um, a major event a year um, this year it's in Atlanta. It's not too late to register and you don't have to be certified to attend. So um, you can come and see how it goes, how it works. And we're expecting about 3,500 people to attend a three-day event in Atlanta where there will be plenty of opportunity for network, for education, one-on-one -on -one meetings. I mean, it, it's a whole... Um, really big opportunity, but we, each of the regional partner organizations, and there are 14 of us throughout the U.S., we've each carved out a territory, um, each of us has local sponsors. 
So for example, Office Depot is a local sponsor of WeBank Florida. It's also a national sponsor of WeBank. And right now we're working with Office Depot to put together a pitch competition in the fall. So get your business certified and you may be able to participate in a pitch competition sponsored by, by, um, by Office Depot. Um, so it's really, it, I, I think even if you're not looking for, for corporate or federal contracts, mm -hmm. you should still get certified. We have plenty of women in our database who only work with other women. They provide services to other women business owners. So if you're the kind of person who says, I support women-owned businesses, and I wanna work with women-owned businesses in my supply chain, you have really great opportunity through the WeBank network to do that. Got it. So just to recap, we have events that you can attend. There's a WeBank link where you can go in and find, you know, potential partners uh, for collaborative opportunities, research information about competitors. And then third, you had a pitch competition. <laughs> uh, that was a really good, a really good segue into two things that I wanted to add. You did mention um, the strategic alliances and the agreements. Would you mind telling us a little bit more what goes into those different strategic alliance agreements and uh, when forming one with another business? And then the other component of it was, um, well, if you actually answered this one, do you have to be certified to attend the events? Yeah, so, so I'll, I'll go with the last. You don't have to be certified to attend any events. There, there are a couple of... Um, opportunities that are only for certified women-owned businesses through the WeBank national events and our local events, right? If you want to do one-on-one -on -one matchmaking with our corporate partners, you have to be certified. That's a benefit of being certified. Um, the strategic alliances. So, you know, I'll, I'll make the disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer, okay? And as you're going to create a strategic alliance, you need to have some sort of a contract and agreement in place. Um, but there are a couple of things that you should have in place. Number one is the three of us, let's say that we're going to form XYZ Alliance, right? The three of us need to decide who is going to be the lead. So let's say Shakira, Shakia, you decide you're the lead. We decide that you're the lead, okay? So we now have a lead, we have a name for the group, the alliance, and really, really important is an exit strategy because the three of us all get along really well right now and we know we're all in this together, we have our eyes on the prize, we're moving along together. And then all of a sudden, I have a baby, I have a death in my family, I have a new vision, I have something, and now I don't want to be part of this alliance anymore. What's the exit strategy? Do you buy me out? Do you allow me to stay? You know, you got to create the exit strategy before you start, because if not, you're going to have an ugly corporate divorce, and nobody wants to get into an ugly corporate divorce, right? especially if you're in the middle of a, of a contract. That will hinder your contract. You may lose that contract. It's added stress and strain you don't need. So hire a lawyer to create all of the documentation that you need to make this a legal entity. Choose a person who's gonna be the lead. Because as I mentioned, the corporations wanna work with one person. Decide how you're going to divvy up the task. So you get the money um, and then you pay us for the work that we do. That's one way to do it. It could also be every, all the money goes into a kitty and, and we divvy up the, you know, equally. No matter who's done the work, we're a team, we're, we're divvying it up equally. The next thing really, really important is have an exit strategy that everybody agrees on before you actually start a contract. Okay. Now that was that was great. And if you miss those, don't worry. You can you'll you'll have the opportunity to rewind it and, and write it down. Uh, but again, one thing that Nancy highlighted is that you need to go to a lawyer to get this this paperwork 
drafted and documented. Uh, just because language is, you can interpret things differently. You want to make sure that you go through a lawyer to make sure you have all of this um, outlined. So another quick question. Oh, hands up. Did you have a question? Because I well, yeah, I just, going. just about those agreements <laughs> and everything. When you break it down with the with the the S Corp, C Corp, or LLC, however you want to create your business, you want to make sure you have those agreements laying everything down in the contract of operating agreement to show who equity partners or who have ownership and what roles they are. You know, you may agree everything word of mouth or orally, but when the ink is on the paper, it makes the deal safer. And I think those contracts are for, uh, is for, when, for when we're not friends anymore. You know, and we was happy to ready to, to jump in bed and do business, but some things didn't go as, as planned. So we got to go back to the contract because the contract is going to expose everything. The agreement is going to expose everything when we're not friends anymore. So I think it's important to have everything documented. Everything is safer when the ink is on the paper. That's all my two cents. <laughs> Oh, th um, thank you so much, Nancy. Uh, we have one final question, and it was more around the focus of what would you like, what type of message would you like to share with the audience uh, who are women-owned businesses and are looking to expand and grow their business? What message would you give to them? Well, well first off, my, my message would be congratulations right? Congratulations on your decision to scale your business, because that is a really difficult decision to make. Um, most small businesses fail within the first year. And those that survive, they start feeling pressure in year three, right? Because so you've, you've got two years, three years worth of business under your belt. Now what? Do you have a lifestyle business? Is it just paying your bills and allowing you to meet your familial obligations? Or are you ready to scale? And then the decision to scale is, is this your decision or is somebody pushing you? Because we all have family members who say, yeah, you should grow your business. You should hire more people. You should do this. You should do that. But if you're, as a woman business owner, you're not ready to do that, you can decide not yet. It doesn't mean I won't ever be ready, but you know, my kids are still small. I'm exploring new, 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 new markets, new business opportunities. I'm not ready to scale, but make that decision, make an educated decision for, for yourself. Um, I always like to say that, you know, business ownership is the key to financial independence. It really is the way for you to take control of, of your finances. When you work for someone, you have one boss and that boss can turn around and let you go for a variety of reasons without much notice. When you work for yourself, if you're smart, you have many contracts, right? So you can have business in this area, you have business in that area, you have. So if one goes away, and we saw that happen through the pandemic, right? A lot of us have had to pivot because our contacts, our contracts closed because of the pandemic and that left us with new opportunities. But if, you know, if you're smart about it, um, scaling your business, you can do over time and you can do it with a lot of help. Right. I would love for everyone listening to this uh, call, um, this program, if you all would get certified, that would make me really, really happy. But even if you don't get certified, find a group of like minded people. As I said, it's really lonely as a woman business owner at the top. Sometimes you feel like you have to make every single decision and you don't have a support group to rely on. Find yourself a community, find a group. The other thing um, is I really suggest you keep on top of your game by reading. I'm a voracious reader. I probably read two, three books a month and I read all kinds of books. I read business development books. I read self-development books. I read all kinds of books. And keeping on top of my game is the leader looking up and out 
and making sure that when I meet someone, I'm a solutions provider. I know the industry. I know I've done my research when I'm meeting with a new client. I've done my research. I know what they need and how I can help. And the best thing to do when you approach a new client is to set yourself up as a solutions provider. This is how I can help you save money. This is how I can help train your people. This is how I can keep your people safe. This is how I can get your product to market faster. Start by being a solutions provider. And always remember that people do business with people they know, they like, and they trust. And you got to get someone, you got to, you know, date the person before you marry them, right? So the same with a corporate contract or even a federal contract, you got to get to know the person and build a relationship. And trust is a really key factor, right? So if you're asked to do something and you don't know how to do it, don't lie. Just say, you know what? I'm not the person for that, but let me see who I can refer, okay? And that is going to be golden, right? So if people do business with people they know, they like, and they trust, set yourself up as a trustworthy person that they can refer. If they don't have business, they might know someone who needs your services and they'll refer you. Yes. I, I love that. And people look, people do business with who they, who they like, uh, who they respect and who they trust. So the three of our principles over here at Global Connects is honesty, integrity, and smart work. And those principles keep you in business. You never go out of business and you keep business flowing in with those three principles. Um, Shaki, you have anything? Um, so I think, um, no, I don't have anything. That was it. I was trying to think, oh my goodness, that was a good ending. Oh, but we wanted to ask um, Nancy, how can people get in touch with you and how can they learn more about um, the certification with WeBank? Right, so, so the, the WeBank National website is a really great resource and that's uh, wbenc.org. It's Women's Business Enterprise National Council. So the acronym WBENC.org. My local website is WebecFlorida.org. So it's Women's Business Enterprise Council without the national, right? Because I'm just Florida. WBEC.org. Um, and then my personal email, if anybody wants to speak to me personally, is Nancy Allen at Women's Business.info. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nancy. Uh, we have that. All of these links will actually be in the description section of this video. Um, and if you're listening to this podcast on uh, Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, uh, iTunes, make sure you go and check out the uh, YouTube and, and a website will be coming up soon as well. So for all of these links, because every episode we drop the links, wait, the, the guests come in, they drop the jewels, they drop the links and we'll put them in the chat. So that way you can always have access to them. Uh, but again, thank you so much, Nancy, for coming in. I'm sure our audience is extremely uh, excited about this episode, especially for our uh, women biz uh, business owners who are part of the community. And be weary, you will get a, a bunch of emails in <laughs> your email uh, because you know, a lot of our, our audience members, they are not shy uh, of reaching out and asking questions. So definitely <laughs> look forward to that. Give yourself up for that. <laughs> I, I, I'm happy to help in, in any way that, that, that I can. Again, it's all for me, it's all about promoting women owned businesses and, and access to independence, however it is you you define independence. So, Absolutely. Hamza, I want to close yes. this out. Now, who run the world? <laughs> <laughs> that's uh oh uh, <laughs> uh, women women businesses are winning period and i know as of last time i checked the department of defense is allocating 100 billion dollars towards women-owned businesses for the new decade so there's ton of opportunity for empowering uh, uh small women-owned businesses to take it up to that next level and i'm all with partnering partnering with women because uh, they get through doors that men can't. <laughs> uh, so I appreciate you, Nancy, uh, for coming out to Government Coins Podcast, uh, number one government contracting podcast in the U.S. 
sharing wonderful, valuable information with our listeners. And then also, um, I'm checking out as I'm one of the co-hosts to the Government Coins, uh, Hamza Sabri, CEO and founder of Global Connects. And I hope that this episode was very informative and valuable for all the listeners that's on today. Yes, and I'm Shakia checking out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this with at least five people that you know, women-owned businesses, because they don't want to miss out on these opportunities. All right, we'll see y'all in the next episode. Have a good one. Peace. Peace.